Thank you very much, Tina. Now we are ready with our first rider in this first heat. The format is pretty simple. Uh, six riders, there are three spots available in the super final. They've got two passes of the course and the highest score of those two passes will count. Liam Peacock drops in first. All right, so on his first hit, coming off a little bit earlier, but right there, straight into the double tantrum. So Liam's one of the few guys, he has that really on lock as he approaches the pipe section on. Board side, back side, 180 across. So that's a clean first pass for Liam. I think maybe he would have liked a cleaner tantrum. Maybe, I don't know, but right now, as he comes in, Pipes right there, coming off 270 to blind, landing with the rope behind his back. As he approaches, this is his forte right there. Going rail to rail to rail, 270 out. And right now, there it is, Liam Peacock locking in, opening up Munich Mash, sensational. That was huge. Well, if, it, if you're just watching this for the first time, that is a pass. So the cable goes out and back across the course. And there are different weights, Dave, on each of the obstacles, aren't there? Absolutely. So the, the kind of focal point of the run is right there, the, the centre section, where Liam did the double tantrum. That's 20% of his run. Going the other way, it's 25%. So that's where you're going to see the biggest hammers. You saw him slip right back on that one. How badly is he going to be marked down for that? So yeah, the judges are ideally looking for clean hits, but this last hit that he did, the, the, the tantrum transfer that we'll probably see in a moment was incredible. So I think all in all, you saw by the smile on his face right afterwards, he's pretty happy. Yeah, he's stoked. Well, first run down, he's got a second run to go, but that one was very, very impressive. Liam Peacock, that was your pick for the win as well. I think I, I'm, I'm a Liam, I mean, I'm an everyone fan, but I'm definitely a Liam fan, so. Well, he's got that momentum, hasn't he? He's coming off the back of that yard sale. Yeah, he took the win, he went in, he didn't even get qualified into it. He had to do a separate qualification contest and managed to make his way into the contest, into the finals, and then take the win, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Okay, well, the score's just come in for Liam Peacock, 35.6 for his first run. Next up, John Dryling from the US, the 23-year-old out of Orlando, Florida. Yeah, John, an absolute beast, as I was saying in the preview. John, he's got a lot of tech skills right there, boosting in to this rail-to-rail -rail transfer right there, now approaching the kicker, coming in. There's the Pete Rose with the grab, making that look so clean out. Like he's, he's really in his element right there as he approaches the pipe. 270 transfer, see the way he locks in, that is just stunning. Really, really clinical at the moment. You know, and John's had a lot of difficulties. His board hasn't arrived. The airline's lost it. And, oh, such a beautiful transfer right now. He's really smooth, fluid on the water. Rail to rail to rail right there. Oh, John just going down. So losing his flow, 
You said he's had a lot of momentum. Again, like Liam Peacock, he's been building fourth, third, second. Yeah. And he, he knows his confidence is building with every single one of those decent positions. Absolutely. I mean, he's got the skills. He just hasn't been able to put it down on the day yet to quite take that win. But I think it's going to happen eventually. Hopefully for him this weekend, it's going to be it. It's okay. The, the, the beauty of this competition format is you get two runs. So it's not over for John just yet. Okay, well, John gets out of the water. We can throw down to Tina. What's the atmosphere like after the first couple of runs, Tina? I can believe that, Tina, because uh, as Dave and I talk, there are oh, no, oh, no. Oh, goodness, Timo Kappel from Austria. Very unusual fall. Let's hope that there's a first trick rebate. He hasn't hit the first obstacle. I mean, have you ever seen that happen before? Honestly, it, it does happen, but it's so rare, you know, and often that that can happen you're so focused on maybe the center section or your kicker hit going up the bar level that you kind of you zone in on the important parts and forget that it's just such a shame so the 180 in and then just dives the nice that yeah. as tina said could it be a question of pressure getting to it? it could be you know timo's kind of i would say maybe not as well established i mean he's such an incredible rider but maybe not as much experience but yeah very unusual form I tell you what, it's watching the rest of the riders in the main shot there, and you get the impression that they're excruciatingly embarrassed for him. Yeah, no, it's one of those kind of freak out. It's like, yeah, just a freak incident that hopefully won't happen in a second run. Yeah, well, I think he's getting a rebate. Looks like he's back up on top okay. now. So. Brilliant. That's probably just the nice kind of vibe around, you know, wakeboarding. Everyone's friendly. No one's gonna, no one's gonna hold them back for that. Like it's not fair, you know. Okay, so we have confirmation of the rules. There is a first trick rebate, just as you would have in skateboarding or BMX on a ramp setup. If you haven't uh, actually tricked the ramp, or if it's in your first trick, then you're allowed to go back and start again. So, Timo Kappel, get out of jail, free card on his first run. Here we go. Hopefully that hasn't knocked his confidence too much, you know? I think he's a very, I've been watching him practice, he's a very strong, consistent rider. Yeah, you had him down as one of your dark horses, didn't you? I did, actually, yeah. He's, honestly, he just has such a controlled style right there, locking in, rail to rail, 270 transfer, absolutely stunning rider right now. Into the kicker, the heel side 900, just losing the handle. That... <laughs> Oh, that felt to me like it was a layover, a la loss of concentration, maybe still hanging on to that mistake. Exactly, you know, that can really get inside your head. And in wakeboarding, when you're passing the handle, it's, there's so much going on. You're worrying about the spin, you're worrying about this handle that you've got to pass right there two and a half times. Just losing it on the third handle pass right there. So annoying. We, we saw him land that so many times in practice. He's quite consistent at it. Okay, well, well, Tino makes his way back to the shore. We can throw down to Tino. Okay, one man who doesn't appear to be feeling that pressure at the moment is Victor Salmon, the Belgian who grew up in Thailand from the age of two. Uh, Dave, this guy lives above one of the world's best wake parks. He literally lives, his front garden is actually a wake park. And so, yeah, he has had some of, this is where all the pros go to train in the winter. So growing up, he's only 17 years of age. I believe he's the youngest rider on our on our kind of rota today. And he's so, like, you can see he's smiling, he's having a good time, he's still a kid. Um, and honestly, I'm a huge fan. Victor rides super clean, as you can see, rail to rail. 270 transfer, 270 out, coming into the kicker. Now that is Victor's very own trick. I don't know what to recall it, but a handle pass, maybe back roll to Mexican back roll with Reaver, I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a unique trick, and that is what the judges are looking for, you know? So, <laughs> There's nothing the like seeing the experts confounded. A little bit of a grass ride up there. Is he going to bank some extra points for that one? I don't think they'll quite score it, but uh, yeah, right there. A beautiful hit on the pipes. As he sets in, this is 25% of their score, so this is where it all matters. 270 on rail to rail. Victor right now putting in a very clean run. Let it not be the curse of the commentator. And it's not. 
unbelievable riding by Victor right there. Beautiful, really relaxed style and some super technical tricks there. Grace under pressure. Oh, oh absolutely. So graceful, as you said. Um, I think that's going to be one of our best runs so far. You know, really clean. Where we saw Liam maybe butt checking a little bit on the double tantrum. We saw his arm go in. Victor right there, just so smooth and you know, so it's it's very pleasurable to watch, and I think that is definitely going to help him with the scores. Well, he's got real mixture as well, hasn't he? You saw that he's got a completely original trick, and then he's got these really technical transfers. Absolutely, yeah. And this trick here on the kicker, I tell you, he is literally the only person doing that. I don't know what he wants to go. It could be called a slurpee. I'm not really sure, but right now, that was beautiful. And I know he goes backwards, rewind to blind on it, which if we see that maybe in a later round, you know, we're in for a treat, I think, either way. Okay, still plenty more to give for Victor Salmon. Currently sat on a 64.1, nearly doubled the score we saw from Liam Peacock's first run. Which just goes to show the weighting that the judges are putting on a clean, smooth run, you know, because Liam had some big tricks in there, but it just wasn't as, like, locked in on the rails and wasn't quite as clean. So we're learning here as we go. Okay, certainly on paper, one of the favourites now, Gunter Oka. On Cincinnati. An absolutely unbelievable wakeboard boat on the boat and the cable right there showing that. The 50-50 to board slide transfer coming in. Oh my, a tail grab Pete Rose right there, grabbing with the opposite hand. That is honestly as technical as it gets. Right there on the pipes clean. So this is good from Gunther. Really, really clinical. Opting for the grass turn right there as he comes into the pipe to pipe section. We've seen some awesome stuff there. Front side board slide, and then I think maybe going 270, couldn't quite see as he comes in right there. Rail to rail, going back onto the rail, 270 out, and then as he comes into the last section, rail, oh, and coming in with a nice, stylish grab 360. A good run, wasn't enough to take that top five. Super, super clean. He looks, because once you're in the middle of that, that centerpiece obstacle, hold on, we'll go through the kicker here, the Pete Look runs. at that tail grab, Pete Rose, so, Oh, that is so pleasing. As a wakeboarder, I'm like blown away by that. Amazing. Super, super comfortable. But here we've got over 20 meters of rails that he's transferring between. Three transfers there. Absolutely. And going, what's more is this setup, the obstacles are set up underneath the cable. So the tension's very different. That is putting Gunther into first place. So 69.58 for Gunther Oka. That's just ahead of Victor Salmon on 64.1. And big drop back to Liam Peacock, 35.6. So he's, I think, with Liam Peacock, what we saw there was a very obvious uh, penalisation of that back slap. As he comes in right now, what are we going to see? The pipes. 180 on, 450 transfer. Very nice. Uh, everyone's, oh, the high fives. Getting Lovely. up close and personal with the fans. Absolutely, they love to see that, quite engaging. Nose press transfer, nose press, 360 oh. out. Oh. How did he pack that in? He, he was on the way down already. Ooh. Oh, oh just, just clipped the edge to the ramp. He's claiming it, he's happy. Unbelievable, I have to say that nose press for me. That was one of the best hits I think we've seen on the on that pipe section. So Felix Georgie, oh, just killing that ramp in. The technicality to land on an up ramp right there is so difficult. And of course, you know, in the, in the heart of the fans. He did get the high five there as yeah, well. From the other angle, it didn't look like he got the touch. Just but really important at this stage to point out that you're coming off the water where you can dig that edge in. But the moment you hit any of the ramp surfaces, then the ball can just slide. Yeah, you have to be 100% flat, so that's probably one of the most difficult parts about it, especially as the course, as I was saying, is in the middle, you can't take any edge to it, and so maybe that was just what happened. The slightest edge could have just tripped him up. Okay, so Felix Georgi comes back, and we will go back to the top of the par now for second runs. Got a couple of highlights from this first run, though. To Oka with that Pete Rose tail grab. Yeah, I, have to, is so I know, yeah, I have to say, he's one of the most stylish wakeboarders there is. Like, look at even just grabbing that. It's not maybe the most technical trick, but he's really ticking the boxes of just like overall clean, nice riding.
very, very smooth. Good at tech. You no, know, that's exactly it. He's ticking the box of technical too, and he's stoked, and you know, he right, deservingly so. Okay, Tina is with good Taroka now. So we're taking the top three from this first heat of six. At the moment, that means Gunter Oka, Victor Salmon and Liam Peacock are in there, but very, very close between John Dryling, Liam Peacock and Felix Georgie. Yeah, it's certainly close. I'm looking forward. The beautiful, the beautiful thing about this format is, you know, they get a second run. And so Liam knows what he's got to do. Bearing in mind, it's top three to the final, so if anything goes wrong, he's in a good position, but I'd say he'd like to get a little bit of a higher score. A lot of pressure behind him. Oh, mistake there. Yeah, he made that same mistake in the first round, unfortunately. There's the double tantrum he's known for. A little bit cleaner this time with the indie grab. He kind of missed the grab in the first round. He is an absolute unit, and you've said that he's just not scared. He doesn't see consequences. He literally, he's not, it's not just a positive mindset, it's he only sees the correct outcome, which is amazing. And you can see it right now, pipe to pipe right there, 270 out, as clean as you like. Is he approaching, so what are we gonna see here? Rail to rail, oh, a very nice hit. And now, are we gonna see the infamous? There it is, tantrum, board slide, just dragging out of it, a little bit sketchy. Who knows? So, so technical on that last feature, but undoubtedly, we saw it in the first round, it was marked down for those little sketches being a little bit ragged around the edges. Absolutely, and I think that, I don't know, I mean, the judges can, that was a little bit better than the previous run in my opinion, but nonetheless, I see right there on the double tangent, that grab is so locked in, it's just hard, and actually he didn't quite butch that too hard there. This rail hit here, right now, beautiful. So he goes onto one rail and then back the other way, and then just 90 out right there, so nice. And he's riding that central rail all the way to the end. He's finishing each of those sections. He's not jumping off too early. 62.66, massive improvement for Liam Peacock. And we know he's got somewhere to go with that little mistake on the first feature. Absolutely, the only thing is that leaves him in third place right now, which could be, could be an interesting one. You know there's a lot more riders to go. But it gives him enough daylight. He was 35 points before, John Dryling just behind him. So at least there's a a bit of a marker set now that Dryling needs to hit. Absolutely, and look at the height on that as he boosts the transfer. Great transfer, but he came off early. A little bit early, but there's that Pete Rose, nice and clean. You can see the focus in his face nearly. He's really driven, he's really motivated to try and come out on top. The course suits him, as you can see right there on the pipe section, making it look so easy. And just power sliding into that corner. All right, nice, clean hit on the pipes. This is the main section right now, the down rail. All right there, super clean. That's where he went down in the first run. Let's see what he's got right now. 180 on, oh, and the rewind 90 out. That is a legit hit. Finding the tension on that, absolutely huge respect to John on that. Okay, put your reputation on the line. Is that gonna beat the 62 Ooh, just made by Lane? I don't know, I think it could. Um, that first hit might penalise him where he came off the rail, like you said, a little bit early, but that Pete Rose, nice passing the handle. The judges probably prefer to see him land blind. That could penalise him a little bit. But we saw, again, we saw the same mistake from that tail slide. It's on the tail, and watch, like, just so smooth right now on this hit. Wait till you see how 180 on, but it's the rewind at the end of this. He's on the tail right there, and finding the right tension there, impeccable. Honestly, so impressive. Okay, Tina is down with Liam Peacock right now as that 63.97 comes in. Ja, der ist auch. Ja, 
Okay, it's a disappointment for Liam Peacock, but John Drylink making the most of this now as he takes his lap back. Absolutely, and it just shows you never know, you never know what's going to happen in wavering right now. Coming in, up, rail to rail to rail, 50-50 in the whole way along. I think backside 180 out as he comes into the last section. Nice, right there, a little backside lip slide transfer. But Very again, these cool. are the three guys battling it out. We've just seen Liam Peacock, John Dryling, and then Timo Kappel. Yeah, I mean, Timo's just put a really good run in. I think he's, you know, he's going to be happy. It's a lot of good stuff happening, and it's, it's early days in the competition still. So nice, locked in, 50-50, across to the next rail. On those pipes on the bottom, my apologies, 270, or 360 out, which is honestly coming down, final attention. Oh, nothing but respect to Timo there. This could be a big score. 74.87, Timo Kappel moves into the lead. John Dryling's occupation of that third spot is preciously short. So Victor Salmon now on the bubble spot. Gunter Oka in second, Timo Kappel in first. So now it's Victor Salmon currently in third on a 64.1. That makes things interesting for Victor. Yeah, he needs he needs to up this. He seems a bit more concentrated this time around. The last time he was joking around, this time he's focused, he's ready, knows what he's got to do. Well, Felix Georgi down at the bottom there still has one run left and he could yet unseat, unseat him. Yeah, right there, a little bit wobbly on the landing. Oh, and he only just made the kicker. Barely make it, oh, beautiful. Stalled out, backside five with the grab. Although not the highest spin, the judges will like the style on that. Pipe to pipe, tapping the end there, if, if I'm not mistaken. He's a off a little bit early, wasn't he? So, not the tidiest run yet. He, I got the feeling like he improvised on the kicker there. A little, oh, he completely did, and getting sketchy holds it. This is an extraordinarily intense course, so you come off slightly wrong on one thing, it can mess you up, as you can probably see right there, it's not probably the hit he was looking for. Right there, wobbly in the air. Probably not Victor's best run, but nonetheless, he managed to hold it together, get back to the dock. So I lost his flow after that first obstacle and couldn't really regain it. Absolutely. This is the first one. 270 transfer, hard way across, and then he just got, it's that slack in the line, you know, so the line tension is right under the cable, it makes it extremely difficult to maintain it, and just there, uh, skipping out. Did well to hold on, to be quite honest. Okay, so standings at the moment, Timo Kappel is in first, Into Oka in second with one run to go, 45.41 there for third placed Victor Salmon. John Dryling, Liam Peacock in fourth and fifth. Uh, they have had their second run, so it's over for them. But there's Felix Georgi, the last man to drop, could yet upset the apple cart. Right now, Gunter Oka in second place drops in for his second and final run. So this will be interesting because obviously he's in the finals now, so it's a matter of trying to get himself up into that first position. There it is, that tail grab Pete Rose. It's my favourite thing he does. I cannot, cannot fault it. It's so beautiful. And you said he's one of the best and most versatile riders in terms of the fact he can ride both boat and cable. Absolutely, you know, he's so consistent on both. He's, he brings his own unique style, and it's, it's unusual now, going visit a little younger, uh, it's unusual to see riders who are killing it both on the cable and the boat, but you can see right now, he's so solid as he hops on rail to rail. 270 transfer, this run right now is so smooth, easy on the eyes right there with the big old gap. Well, you saw it as he came off that last feature, we call it after bang, where he's just, he's everything so slow, he's so clinical and so confident in every trick. Absolutely, and you can see like, he's just got a smile on his face, he knows, he's, he knows he's done well, and that is a fantastic feeling when you make it back to the dock. I mean, there's a little bit of pressure, you know, when you get back to the dock, it actually puts some pressure on the next guy. It gives him that kind of sense of, oh, he just rode really well. So it, it all it all makes me change. But look at that right there. So nice. Just drop it into the water. And the way the arms come down, he's got the line right down by his hip. Yeah. Keeping the tensions difficult. Gunther is stoked on that. 
5-3. So Gunter Oka stretching his lead out at the front there, or rather reclaiming it from Timo Kapel, I should say. Uh, he's betted in by just under six points. So last man in, Felix Georgi, 34.62. Couple of mistakes from him in the first run. But undoubtedly, he's got the skills and the repertoire to push himself up into the top three. Absolutely, and the experience. Felix getting a little line tension issues right there on the first hit. Going up, that is the first rider we've seen missing a kicker to use the, the obstacles, the features, which is very interesting with the nose press to nose press right there. And it didn't feel like he used it in a technical or impressive enough way to actually I mean, yeah, it's work against the kicker. It's difficult to say. I'm not sure how the judges will take that. You know, everyone else has been hitting the kicker, so it's unique right there. That tail tap, that's the feeling of success. And opting for an alternative line right there, jumping over the kicker. A very interesting technique right now. Almost playing it safe. I'm intrigued. So, super creative there from Felix Georgi. Whether or not that will uh, translate into points with the judges, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It definitely, as you say, look at this, kind of hopping over the face of the net. I have to say, this is daunting going over that, tapping and down. Although, you know, that's 25% of your score. Do you want to waste 25% on that or do you want to get a tech line? I see where he's going with uniqueness, but I'm not sure. Uh, judging by the smile on his face, he wasn't riding for points today. He was riding to impress. So, Felix Georgi will take sixth place. Let's get the rest of those positions confirmed, though. In fifth place, we've got Liam Peacock. In fourth, it's John Dryley. The top three, Salmon, Kappel and Oka. But this was first place qualifier, Unter Oka. He made it look remarkably easy, Dave. He did. I mean, he's an absolute... I don't like using the word machine because that eliminates style. But he's like a style machine. You know, look, he's always, always tweaking it out on one leg. He's on the tail, he's on the nose. Then when he's in the air, he's always grabbing. He's just a phenomenal way footer right there. As you can see, going back and that 270 transfer. Well, I, I'd say in any board sport, it's very difficult. You don't see many tall... Many people who are tall timber who are able to look stylish as well, but Gunter Oka is doing it there. Absolutely, one of the few six feet tall wakeboarders who's, who's putting out some nice tricks. Okay, so if your name's highlighted in gold, you are headed to the super final. Victor Salmon, Timo Kappel, and Gunter Oka take a bow. It's the end of the road for Dryling, Peacock, and Georgie. Uh, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we have the second heat for you. Five riders vying for the final three spots in the super final. We've got William Klang of Sweden, Blake Bishop, Raf de Rome, the Canadian who is back on the contest circuit, Dominic Hernler and Nico von Lurchenfeld. We'll see you in a second.
Hello and welcome back to Munich's Olympic Park, home of the 1972 Olympics and this weekend home to Munich MASH, one of the biggest action sports festivals in Europe. We've already had skating and BMX. Today it is the turn of Wake Park and it's finals time. This is the second heat. Two runs, best score counts. William Klang, Blake Bishop, Raf de Rome, Dominic Hernler and Nico von Lurchenfeld all vying for it. A Sweden, American, a Canadian, an Austrian and a German. So a real international mix here. And I suppose most importantly, Dave, a massive mix of styles. Yes, absolutely. A complete variation of, of riders here, you know. And so I, I'm excited to see it. You know, Raf de Rome in, in the best trick competition on Friday. He took the win. He got so technical on the rails, which was interesting because he's taken a bit of a bit of a gap from wakeboarding competitions. He's been off. I'd say about a year and a half now. And he dominated the scene so early on. Right now, though, we're kicking off with Sweden's William Klang, 23-year-old out of Gothenburg, one of the most creative riders in wakeboarding right now. Absolutely, and I have to say, what's very interesting, I was watching him practice, he's super calculated, he's drilling the judges, asking them what they want to know. He's thinking about each approach, he's thinking about runs. And where most people will session, he'll go out, he'll do his run, he'll do his business, and he leaves. So he's building the run for the best points possible from the judges. Absolutely, and see on that first hit, using all three panels on that, and there we go, the Pete Rose, similar to Gunther's, a little bit of a sailfish instead of a tail grab, but a beautiful, that's one of my favorite tricks, and look at that, his knee just so locked in. Beautiful, taking his time on that pass, just head down to the water, he is. I have to say, I've seen this run many times in practice, he has it so dialed in right there, with the front board, front board, 270 out. As he comes in right now, onto the uh, rail to rail to rail, front three out, William right now, boosting backside 180. That's a great run. Big shifty late backside 180 and landing on the ramp, not the water. That is, I can't explain how difficult that is. You have to land with a perfectly flat board. You're, as I said, you're working with difficult tension, absolutely incredible riding. Like that, that's an amazing run. There's not much room to improve on that. He will be extraordinarily happy. And you've got to think it's a flat landing on water when you're going as fast and as high as these guys. That water is almost a concrete. It is concrete, you know, and the trick is to actually go fast. And uh, yeah, just basically, if you, if you land with speed, you'll be okay. It's when you drop out of the sky, that's when it hurts those knees. Okay, 80.14, a massive statement from William Klang. Exactly what you said, Dave. He studied what the judges wanted to see and they have rewarded him. Top three scores from this heat will go through to the super final. Each rider has two runs. William Klang has set the bar very, very high though. Second rider in, Blake Bishop out of the States. Absolutely, Ed. It's pretty intense to think that this is just the heat system before the super final right now. Blake going for that Pete Rose, not as clean, missing the grab and his hand on the water, but that's not gonna hold him back. He's more of a tickle than a grab, wasn't he? Exactly, but that was a nice little hit on the pipe section. Blake. He's one of those kind of, I call him the new school, old school wakeboarder. He's got the new school tech tricks, but he's got like an old school style to him in a certain way. Right now, as he comes in to the primary section of the course, boosting up that wall ride, front board, straight into the down ramp. I'm not sure if that was fully what he was looking for, but right there, 50-50, back side lip slide. Nice and clean, locked Beautifully in. Beautifully measured. Beautifully measured. I like the uh, old school, new school comparison, especially with those leopard print pants. You know exactly, and he's got the long hair, he fits the style, he's always smiling, always having a good time. Okay. Well, Blake's got his own private park, and I think you said it, like, having that, he's really starting to come through. The progression we've seen from him in the last nine, 12 months is phenomenal. It, incredible, and he's only really been wakeboarding six, seven years. He's so new to it, but he's got to the top so fast, which is very unusual in wakeboarding. So, huge respect for him. Okay, 62.13. Right now, that is good enough for second place for Blake Bishop. Puts him behind William Klang. Next in, it's Rafterone. Absolutely dominated competition, 2012, 2013. And he's backed away a little bit over the last couple of years, but. Munich Mash could be his triumphant return. Right there, as you see, he's unbelievably confident, and the kicker's right there, straight into the double flip. I think a double toss at back row, I didn't see his approach. Beautiful, and he's the first rider to really land it clean. As you see right there on the pipe section, 
360ing along the gaff. Most guys are doing 270s. Raph's not scared to land 50-50 with the handle behind his row, with behind his back. And the big gaff there. Huge end-to-end. Yeah. -end. As you say, into the uh, money section now. This is where the big points are. Oh, and so clean right there. Rail to rail to backside lip on the last one. And there's a big old method across the whole thing. It was almost a seatbelt method. He almost got to his back foot. Yeah, it was really, really... And the toe side, which you rarely see people doing toe side methods. He's pumped. Rightfully so, you know. He's... He's got a really nice style, I have to say. I very much enjoyed watching that. Stylistically, he's got the wetsuit on as well. Yeah. The, uh, that going to make any difference? Because you, you went in wetsuitless when you did the course guide. I only went in wetsuitless because I lent my wetsuit to John Drayling. But yeah, right there, I just want to correct myself. It's a double half cab roll he did, and it was so clean. And uh, yeah, the wetsuit, I think, is a little bit for protection. You know, when you land on those, on those rails at 21 miles an hour, you can get a bit of road rash. So, okay, well, the 26-year-old may be feeling the impacts a little more these days. <laughs> there you go, there's that method. Oh. Yeah, so nice right there. And boosting off, having to get <laughs> held back by some of the other riders. Dominic Kola catching him. Okay, we can go down to the uh, lakeside now with Tina Dixon. What's the gossip down there? Okay, so ref to Rome, waiting very patiently at the moment. What's the verdict, Dave? Do you think he's... I, I'm going for second place, mid-70s. I think, I think he'll be second, I think you're right. Don't know if I had first in it. Uh, but then the double flip, it's, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Because three years ago, double flips was, you know, well, double flip, you take the win. But now it's so common that you'll see guys opting for like a stylish Pete Rose or something a little bit more basic with their own kind of twang to it. All I know is I'm not envious of this current position waiting for the scores. Well, longest wait we've seen, and usually that's a good sign. 78.86, so a very strong score from Raftaron. And as you said, that double obviously paying dividends. Absolutely, and you can see he's stoked on that. I think we called it correctly. A very deserving second place, but now. Dominic Hernler, 26 years old, out of uh, Dovriach. Started in 2001 as a boat rider. He was European champion behind the boat in 08 and 10. Uh, he's transitioned to cabling. He's been six-time Austrian champ since. And right there, you can see why. Big old, I'm going to call it a toe side back side 180 over that section. And right there, the money mode. Just really, that is Dominic Hurler's go-to. That's what he's known for. It's called the money mode because it's, it's absolutely, he's so consistent and he normally never lands it. I've actually seen him do it onto a rail. Well, he, he looked like he under-rotated slightly and caught his heels. Yeah, absolutely. So he's trying to land with the rope behind his back. We call it blind because you can't see anything. Super technical trick. If he had landed it, the judges would have been absolutely ecstatic. So good. he's going for it, you know. He knows what he's going to do. Talk me through it because there is, if you're in a cable park with five or six pillars, yeah. you've got a different pull. To the, we've just got two pillars here. And that creates a very different pull, doesn't it? Absolutely. So it's, first of all, it's usually, generally speaking, a higher pull. But also, here the biggest difference between, let's say, a full-size cable and a System 2 cable is that there is, the obstacle is underneath the cable, which makes it so much more difficult finding the line tension. Um, and that, that is the biggest challenge I think all the riders have found. Speaking to them in practice, everyone's struggling with that a little bit. So line tension essentially means the power source. It's where the line is pulling you from, and it's straight out in front of you. If you're behind a boat or on a five-pole cable, then you can generate power by steering away from the power source, but that's much, much harder here. So Nico von Lurchenfeld just yanking the cable in here, the young German from Argau. He's one of the founders of the two-tower system. In fact, his dad invented it, so... Exactly. For hit this lad, that pull will not be an issue. No, this is no strange. He is no stranger to the Sassy Tech system. Right there, rail to rail, and then going onto the bottom bit, and then backside 180 on into the double flip. Oh! I have to say, very uncharacteristical falls. Well, we, did, yeah, we didn't see this many falls in practice. No, not at all. We have seen. Like Nico, honestly, he, I would say, very rarely ever falls on a double flip. I think it's 
maybe the pressure's getting to him, I'm not sure, you know, it's, there's a lot going on, and remember, the beginning of this heat was stacked, everyone rode well. Uh, the judges are just looking for excuses, and the boys are giving them in bucket loads at the moment. You might have noticed on the shot there just before, if you're just joining us, this is the Wake Park final in Munich Mash, Germany. Uh, but we've actually got a two-tiered lake here. There's a weir in the middle of this, and that's almost completely unique in Wake Park. Absolutely. I mean, it makes it so much almost more difficult, but also adds an element of excitement, you know? So you're hitting this ramp, and you're going up a five-foot weir, and you're also obviously going in the air, so it makes it so much more difficult to spot your landing. And then going down, it's like almost like a street-style handrail section, um, which is, has a heavy weighting, which is amazing. OK, these are the highlights from William Klang, the Swede, who came out guns blazing, first run of the second heat. And Dave, you called it, you said he's super analytical and he wants the judges to break down every aspect of scoring and he's prepared. He absolutely is. And you can see, in practice, he did nothing. He didn't experiment. He, he figured out what he wanted to do. He, ex he didn't really experiment much after that and he just did it. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And in competition, consistency is the game. So there was that Moab, Dominic Hernler. And Nico von Lurchen fell on this double. So unusual. But as we we're saying, you're going, effectively, you're going uphill. I'll tell you what, he'd have cleaned out his sinuses. On <laughs> I know, one. yeah. Like he landed nose first. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, it can hurt too, water, you know, but I think that was, he was smiling after that fall. Um, There's the weir, if you're in any doubt. Yeah, these are the standings after run one. Nico von Lurchenfeld, last rider in there, and Dominic Handler, those two falling. Blake Bishop, 62.12. That is the bubble spot, third at the moment. Rafter Rome in second, but the Swede William Klang with a very commanding first run. Oof. It's going to heat up now, though. It is, because you know what? And it's similar to the first heat. If you ask me who's going to end up in the finals, I cannot. Back up against the wall, I don't even think I would be able to give you an accurate answer because anything can happen. For example, we saw Nico falling on the double flip. I would have never predicted that. If he had told me he was going to do a double flip, I think he rarely falls on it. And so this is this is the competition pressure coming into coming into the athletes. Okay, well that pressure is rising. Second runs of the second heat. We already have three riders in the super final. Now looking for the second group of three. Their score will count, so nothing lost from those first runs. William Klang of Sweden drops in. Coming in again using all three aspects of that initial ramp and then coming in, there is the KGB it's called. It's a back roll with a handle pass 360, adding in the grab for extra style. William Klang right now, and there you go, a solid hit. This is, we're seeing it, he is so consistent and you can see how comfortable he is with the tricks because he's not rushing or snatching at any of those landings or transfers absolutely you can see he's so locked in he's practiced it he knows what he's at he's breathing as he rides 50 50 50 50 front side 360 out of the rail to rail to rail and there's the big boost shifty blind 180 landing down the ramp william Klein, incredible and he just pops out with some style as well it's, it's that moment after he's landed the tricks. You know he's in complete control throughout this entire run. Oh, he looked like he might have done a little bit of pre-rotation there. Bit of pre-spin, might be docked a little bit for that, but you know, that's kind of part of the trick essentially on the cable. What I think when I watch him is, he's not thinking will I land it, he's thinking how clean will I land it. You know, he's adding that extra kind of oomph to his riding. Yeah, that's, it. that's a very, very valid point. Absolute belief from the Swede there in both runs. Uh, second run score is eclipsed by the first run score, though, just a 78.49 for William Klang. Uh, it's academic. He is in the top spot at the moment. Next in, Blake Bishop, one of the rising stars of American wakeboarding. He's 18, could be his year. It may well be. He's only young. He's got something to prove, and he's got the tricks. Coming off a little bit early on that, but making it look like he intended to. There's that Pete Rose again, tickling the grab, but he's looking a little bit smoother than the, than the first round as he comes in right now. 50-50, 270, backside, or rewind 90 out, 
nice and easy. It's probably not the most technical hit we've seen on that, but he made it look easy, which is always important. What's interesting is he comes into the tricks, he's breaking at the waist. It looks like he's really kind of hunched into them. It's potentially to do with the narrow stance he's rocking. You know, it's difficult to bend your knees, but right there, that's a good hit as he comes in to the final section, 50-50. Not quite what he's looking for. I can feel his pain right there. We'll have oh, to you've see. got to be so balanced on the rail to really get your pop out of it again. And you've got two to three transfers backing up. To think, it's all in the approach. Everything, the make or break of each of these tricks is nearly done in the approach. You know, right there what's happened is maybe getting a little bit hung up, so missing the grab, focusing on just landing, you know. He doesn't want to fall because if you fall, you, you don't get picked back up, that's it. But right there, 270 out, backside, pretty hard. And then you've only got literally two seconds until you're into the next round. Okay, so Blake Bishop at the moment sat on a 62.12, sorry, a 67.65. That's the score coming in. So he won't move up. He's going to sit in that third place bubble spot. We're only taking the top three riders from this heat. We have to run currently in second, so Blake won't be too nervous watching this one. But the next two riders, Dominic Hermer and Nico von Lurchenfeld, will be nervous time. Second place at the moment for Raf Daron. Oh, holds it, Raf, right there, saving himself. But I think because of that, you know, he's holding back. He knows it's probably going to be his first run score. Raf, maybe he'll do a bit of warming up. He's got some of this, like, that transfer is so technical. It's He's, he's such a sick rider. And interesting, we were talking about Blake's, Blake's stance and how he bends at the hips. Watch how Raf has a slightly wider stance. I'd say that's a bit more, a bit more old to awake wing as he comes in now to this section. This will probably just be for the fun of it. Big old rail to rail, backside 270 out off the end. And now this nice rail again. And just taking it nice and easy, 270 the other way, showing a bit of diversity. You know, the judges are looking for spinning both left hand down and right hand down, they want the variation. Okay, so essentially a practice run there for Raptor. I mean, got second place in the bag at the moment, but there's still two riders to drop Dominic Hörnler and Nico von Lurchenfeld, who could unseat certainly him and Blake Bishop. So the 78.86 from the first run will stand for the French Canadian. All right, this makes it very interesting now, I must say. I'm excited to see how these guys, they deal with the pressure, you know. Dominic Hurley, he is a very experienced competition rider. There was a year where he nearly won everything, you know. He's, he's one of the top guns out here. He's one to have the eye on as he approaches his first hit. He loves a big boost with a little melon grab 180. And landing in that tiny transition. Exactly, and then, no! Drop the mode twice. That money mode not quite paying off for him, ironically, today. But Dominic Henry, if there ever was a truer sportsman, he's, he's pumping yes. up, the crowd are supporting him, he's happy out. Well, one man who will be very happy is Raf Daron. He's guaranteed a spot. But we're going to throw down to Tina now. Five P's there, prior preparation prevents poor performance. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That I was phenomenal from uh, William Klang. That is why he's out in front. He did his homework. He's head of Rafter on Dominic Hernlach cannot. For now, unseat third place Blake Bishop. Nico von Lurchenfeld is the one man who could do. Absolutely, and mixing it up, not going for the double. Maybe it got in his head, opting for the chrome over right there. He did squeeze out to it. Right there. Oh, just going down. What a shocker, I uh, to say. The young German losing his mojo on both runs. Oh, disappointment for him there. Absolutely. 
He's one of, with this system being so unfamiliar to so many of the riders, he's one of the guys who would have put serious money on doing well. Absolutely. No, he is. He's so comfortable behind the system, too. And obviously, his, his dad invented it. He's, he's very, he's a lot of practice on it. He, he's a very driven individual. He's such a great wakeboarder. I think, unfortunately, it just wasn't his day, which is such a shame. But, you know, with this lineup, this, this level of wakeboarding, it's, you know, the slightest mistake is enough to cost you getting into that super final. But a super tech course and a very difficult course is putting consistency at a premium right now. And William Klang has proved that. But Rafteron just behind him looking very, very strong as well. Yeah, and it's amazing to see Raf come back nice and strong. You know, he's taking a little bit of time off contest. I'm stoked to see him back. So Blake Bishop in third place, American. Too clean, but he was gifted that third place by Hernler and Von Lechenfeld falls. Then Raftero. That double cabra was so clean, not even a hand down. And then as you can see, William right there. That's cool, I like the way he hops onto the top. He's just so smooth, and like you say, so precise. He's got those five keys. And right there, in 50-50 across, 50-50, and then this front side 360 out. Oh, just clean as a whistle. He knows what he's going to do, and he's doing it. So Gunter Oka, Timo Kappel, and Victor Salmon will join William Klang, Rafterholm, and Blake Bishop in the Super Final. I'm excited. It's going to be a crazy final, you know? Like, there's, we've seen, in the heat section, we've seen some incredible races. So now that it's like, you know, it's all out, try and get on that podium. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Well, each of these guys have got to sit down and take a breath now. Blake Bishop, lots of room for improvement for him, and he can take a lot of positives from that. Raph Durand, the French-Canadian in second, William Klang in first. Those three heading for the Super Final, which is coming up after the break. Hello and welcome back to Munich MASH. This is the Wakeboard Park Super Final coming up. Uh, myself and Dave. Yes. And Keith. Happy to be here. I'm so incredibly excited for this final. It's going to be mayhem. Well, we've just seen two heats that have cut down 11 riders to six for our Super Final. Our biggest scores coming out of William Klang and Gunter Oudka. 
uh, Victor Salmon, Blake Bishop, Timo Kappel, Raf Rome, William Clang, and then Gunter Ota. They're running in reverse order of qualification points. A lot of different nationalities represented there as well. It just goes to show wakeboarding is happening all over the world. It's kind of nice to have a bit of a multicultural, multicultural final. What's interesting though, looking through all of the results, all of the training programs, it seems like Southeast Asia is the hotbed for really good wake parks right now. Absolutely. So in the winter time when it gets too cold in Europe or in the USA, a lot of these riders they'll head to Thailand or to the Philippines and they'll just train over there. You know, the cost of living is very cheap. The cable parks are incredibly high tech. That's the main reason, let's be honest. The cables are amazing. So a lot of the guys heading that direction. Okay, first rider in, Victor Salmon. Yes. Belgian who lives in Thailand. Exactly, and there you go. And there's his kind of own trick. I'm going to call it a slurpy, although he's passing the handle. Um, very nice and very unique, which the judges are going to love. And on, oh, right there, Super Tech tapping in, 270 out on the way out. Brilliant. Just a little sit down on the side there while he waits for the cable to pick up again. <laughs> Absolutely, a little rest, you never know. Catch your breath as he comes into the pipe. 50 50, backside 270, 270 out right there. Nice and clean as he comes in to the main section. 270 on. Oh, just not quite getting onto that third rail to rail. And there you go, that right there, a beautiful hit. Well, there was a lot of intensity to the 17-year-old's run there. Youngest competitor in the Super Final today. And he looks really, really pleased with that run. But as you said, he just he didn't lock into that final feature. No, he's gonna he's missed a little bit on that first feet, on that middle feature. But as you can see, his kicker hit. So that is so, and getting the grab. I'm gonna go ahead and call that a mute slurpee with a handle pass, which is his very own trick. There's no other riders out there doing that. And as I said, the judges will love that. But look how clean that is. And then backing it up with the 270 out, landing with the rope behind his back. Super cool. Okay, so Victor Salmon doing his best impression of a Salmon there. 68.39. Always hard as the first rider to go out into a final because the judges are looking for a really steady range finding score. And they're going to use that for their barometer. Absolutely. I mean, they have to gauge from that. I think Victor's happy that's a fair, fair score. But like you say, they have to kind of set the score. They have to leave room for improvement. But also, who knows? Could be the best one we see. Okay, next rider in. Okay, and that is a very clean hit right there as he approaches the Pete Rose. Again, getting a little tickle on the grab, not quite getting as well as he was in practice. But it's nice, it's clean. He's not sketching out as he goes into that 270, 90 out. This is, this is more the Blake Bishop I was hoping to see in the earlier round. He kind of snuck his way into the finals without sounding too harsh on him. And right there, the front. Oh, so nice. See the way he spun the opposite way out? Yeah, rewinding that direction of travel, but off a flat surface, so hard to do. There's no grip on that rail to initiate an opposite rotation. Incredibly so. And right there, taking it out, 90 to blind. Blake Bishop, I think, will be ecstatic with that run. Very, very technical. It may not have been as showy as some of the big kicker tricks, but very, very technical. We need to study the details here. He's got that tuck like he's about to get shot out of the cannon. He really does, yeah. But look, he's just missing the grab, which honestly, the judges will see that. They know, and particularly in the early round, we saw him missing that grab. So here we go. Look at that. And then he's rewinding there front side, but it's when he rewinds back side. That's when it's really, really sick. But right there, you can see going 270 in the left side right there. And then going to blind right there, you can see he's actually throwing his legs around. And he's got to get his arm right round behind him. The rope wants to pull him the other way. Absolutely, you can call it a blind landing. Okay, 17.16 for Blake Bishop. The American moves into first place. Two riders down, four to go. And they each have two runs. It's only best run counts in the Super Final. So, Timo Kappel from Linz in Austria. Getting the dock start this time round. But right there, a lovely 50-50, 270 transfer as he comes into the kicker. Heel side, 900 right there. Absolutely stomped it. This kid is so big on spins. Oh, he's a spinner if I ever saw one. And right there, you can see him spinning left, right, always on the obstacles, coming onto the grass. I think so far, I don't want to give him that, that curse of the commentator, as they say, but he's riding much smoother now with the big gap. 270 out. 
He's starting to look really comfortable after a difficult start in the heats. He's starting to really warm up. And looking for a very unusual and unique line right there. I'm not quite sure, but there, coming off a little bit early. Started strong, looked like he was finding his rhythm. Maybe not quite in the end. Well, the problem we've got here is that the judges are looking for excuses. Now we're starting to see really consistent runs landed. As they get given an excuse like that, not sliding all the way to the edge of the rail, then they're going to take that opportunity. This was beautiful. Absolutely. And look, adding the grab on, I did not see that in the first time. So clean and so solid. That heel side, front side, 900. No pre-spin whatsoever. That is stunning. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, three handle passes on that 900. It's a busy old trick. Uh, we can go down to the finish area now, though, where Tina is with Blake Bishop. Genau, den Bild die Snowboard und die Skate der Ulti Wake Water, den Afterbang. Wenn wir schön bei der Landung in die Knie gehen. So Raf de Rome on course now, 66.784, Timo Capel. All right, Raf coming in. First hit coming off a little bit early, but right there, the double flip, and then that 360 transfer, landing 50-50, but the twist is the rope behind his back. And that is adding that, the judges see the technicality of that, they appreciate it, and so Raf knows that right there maybe not locking in as well as he'd like and he lost the line tension didn't he as he landed and that's usually the reason the riders don't lock in so well is it's all to do it's a line tension game out there consistency and line tension that's what's going to do well here and he had it right there on that last hit okay so the judge is watching out for any slack it's like extreme fly fishing isn't it? no it is well they're not looking at the slack however if you have good line tension, the chances are your hits are going to be solid. Like you can see, the rope's tight the whole way through that double flip. So clean, like you must have one of the cleanest double flips. And that, I didn't even see the grab initially, so honestly, he is really mixing it up, adding in a lot of different elements. Well, we're after all, back in competition. The first time in a while, and he's looking very, very comfortable at the moment. 77.21 puts him in the lead, but we're running in reverse order of qualification. So the top two seeds from the heat, William Klang and Gunter Oka, yet to drop. So the Swede up next. I'm excited. He is, I have a feeling we're going to see a similar run. I think he's got more up his sleeve, a little bit more in the bag of tricks. But yeah, it's going to be sick. Learned his trade under the Bredas brothers in Sweden. And has taken over their mantle. Now the biggest name in Swedish wakeboarding. Absolutely. Unfortunately, that first hit not going well and maybe just getting in his head, going down the Pete Rose, which I don't think I've seen him fall in that all weekend. That clinical consistency we saw from qualifying. Could it have deserted him now? It will be a cruel twist if it does. It's an interesting one, Ed, because of the course it's so intense. And so when the course is that intense, you find it difficult to almost, you don't have a lot of time between your runs, so you're gasping for air. And maybe he's potentially tired, you know, he's been wakeboarding a lot the last couple of days and even today. Well, potentially he's put so much focus on the qualifying that he's now lost a little bit in the finals. But he's got one more chance there. You said he's super analytical, would be uh, very unusual if he does let it slip there. Abs sorry, absolutely. I think he, he's going to go back to the draw. Board. He's going to focus up. He's going to come back guns blazing. So good to Oka with a chance to make a statement. First runs in the Super Final here. The American from Cincinnati, whose dad actually uh, took part in the Sea World water skiing shows. Yeah, that's a crazy fact. So it's in his blood as he comes in right now to the kicker. What are we going to see? There it is, that Pete Rose. Oh, a little bit sketchy on the landing. Maybe his hand down. That's going to. They're going to penalise him a lot for that but not letting it get in his way. When he 50-50, back three, 50-50, it's pretty legit. So difficult to line that up like that. Incredible control and precision. I know, I think he was born with a wakeboard handle in and a wakeboard on his feet because right there, he's looking so smooth as he comes into the main section. 50-50, 50-50, 270 transfer, just going down. What an absolute shame. So both of the top seeds from the heats go down in the super final. 
And that means that Raf de Rome is in the top spot after the first round. Look at the depth of the water there. I was just about to say, Ed, so that's one of the most intriguing factors of this lineup is you've got to remember when you're coming off those rails right there, you've got three feet of water, so you don't want to be landing in any vulnerable positions. And uh, Gunther kind of foot checking, getting his way out safely. Just three foot deep in the middle of this purpose built lake. Uh, we can throw down to Tina now. Uh, let's see, Tina, what do you make of those uh, last two falls? Thank you, Tina. Well, you can see Raptor runs run here. And he does look really, really comfortable and confident on this course. He really does. He knows where he's at. I think, like Tina was just saying, he saw the course, it suited his style of riding, and he's definitely showing us that right now. And so, I want to say, it's still early days, you know, everyone gets to ride again, anything can change. Let's see what happens. Looking at that run, do you think he's got much to give, much more to give? He definitely does, you know. I think on his first hit, he came off a little bit early. He has more to give, there's more in the tank, for sure. He's one of the most diverse athletes. So we'll have to see what happens. Okay, you can see Gunter Ogner and William Clang taking their falls there. That's the 900 we saw from Timo Kapol. Yeah, Timo has that nine on lock by looks of it. Look at that stale fish. Pete Rose just getting William down. Such a shame. He's been so consistent throughout the event. I don't think he's even put his hand. I think his hand was still dry. What was that wrong? Interestingly, you said there's a bit of tiredness then. It looked like he'd under-rotated a little bit, which would suggest he didn't get the pop he wanted off the kicker. Absolutely. It's, it's very well possible. OK, so those are the standings after run one. Rafter Rome comfortably out in front. Just over seven points of daylight. Ahead of Blake Bishop, Victor Salmon, Timo Kappel, Gunter Oka and William Klang with it all still to do. We'll be back with the second runs after this. Welcome back to Munich MASH for the Wakeboard Park Finals. Currently Raf de Rome, the I've got to say, living legend of the sport, is leading after the first runs. Uh, he was responsible for one of the seminal moments in the sport in 2013 when he entered the Red Bull Wake Open contest and won Features Park 
and open. Yeah, he, I mean, he took it all. He did. He was just at that moment. He was one of the most diverse and kind of all well rounded, all rounded well riders. You know, he was just so consistent. He had the bangers to, to kind of hold it up, and he had the style, which is the most important. And that's, that's what I think Rafa is best known for his style. Um, and it's interesting the juxtaposition of him versus some of the younger guys. Like this man, Victor Salmon, dropping in, lives in Thailand above a weight cart. Actually rolled his ankle skating earlier in the weekend. He's been on ice ever since. And there we go. It is incredible. So that, earlier on I was saying, was his trick. The slurpy corner with the mute grab. And there he rewinded it. So that's, I said we might see this later on in the event. And he did. He's stepping it up right now. Victor Salmon, he has his eyes on the prize. He wants to get on that podium. And I'm guessing he wants to be at the very top of it. Okay, so Victor Salmon just biding his time there. Picking up back onto his route back. Oh, and right there, that was so solid. 50-50, back 270, and then a 270 out. Right there, a little bit skewed, not quite what he's looking for. Victim, Victor Salmon claiming it, though. None that, and still getting a nice hit in there on the end. So riding beautifully, nonetheless, but undoubtedly, Salmon is going to have to put this one down to experience. Bank to 69.39 on his first run. And he hasn't had a big international podium. A lot of people know about him because of where he lives and what he does and the video parts he puts out. But he, above, above a couple of local contests, he hasn't had a big international result. No, he's still kind of, he's young, he's 17. He's on the crisp often, but he's never taken it. So we'll have to see, but yeah, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him for sure. So a couple of mistakes there on both runs. Victor sat in the bubble spot, but there's a lot of talent behind him. Blake Bishop currently sat in second position. Blake, an amazing wayboarder. He's got that kind of style, he's a bit unique. He's got the leopard print shorts on. Rail to rail right there. A little bit early, but I don't think it's going to affect him too much. He made it look confident, he made it look smooth. There's that Pete Rose, and you heard him talking to Tina saying he's missing the grab a little bit, but hopefully. Hopefully he's going to start getting it now, right there. Beautiful transfer. Letting the style hang out as he exits that final feature. And carves his way back to the second pass. Absolutely, and this is his last pass of the competition, right there. As he approaches, this section now has a 25% weighting, so this is where the big hammers are. Rail, oh, and getting it, maybe not as locked in as maybe he would have liked. However, still a good hit. Yeah, but holding that body position, front board to front board. Front board to front board, it's a difficult spot, you know, and especially with the line tension that we've been talking about, it makes it a very, very difficult and alternative situation. Okay, so Blake Bishop currently sat on a 70.16 his first run. You can see he's just tickling that grab. I think the judges, you know, they definitely, speaking to CK and some of the rest of the judges, they're looking for some nice grabs when the kicker tricks do come into play. Okay, so a little more ragged than that first run. So just 67.71. Lake Bishop holds on to second place, but still Gunter Oka, William Klang, Timo Kappel still to drop. And of course, we've got this man, Raf Jerome, current leader in 77.21. And he's looking so comfortable. He is, but in saying that, Raf knows this is anyone's game. He can't sit back, he can't relax. He's got to continue to push it, you know? Well, we know Gunter Oka and uh, William Klang, both capable of in very easy 80-point runs if they land these. Absolutely. I mean, it's possible to even see a 90-point 90, 90 run. I'm not sure if we'll see it. But right now, Timo coming in 50-50, getting a little bit off on the second part of that pipe to pipe. As he comes in, there's that heel side nine with the grab. Doesn't he just make that look so easy? So, WWA World Champion from 2017. Absolutely, and there they're using the full system, so they're doing what's called air tricks as well, where they're basically loading up and springing into the air from the water without using features. But right now we're on the features and killing it on that pipe to pipe section as he comes into the middle bit. This is the most important part. And 360 into the middle bit. The first person to intentionally put the board there. And that is a little bit similar. It's the same rotation as he would have had in that center part, which maybe the judges might not be too into. A good run nonetheless. Tiny bit of repetition for the man who won wakeboarding celebrated return to Fees in Montpellier last month. 
A lot of people thinking they'd be riding high on confidence after that. There's the 900 that worked so hard for him in qualifying. Yeah, but making it look, he just, he's a spinner, you know, he just spins so well. You can even see him on the rails, he's not afraid to kind of do some rail to rail and then spin like we're seeing right now into the down run. And look at his arm, holding the tension. Impressive stuff. But the Austrian patiently waiting for his score. This is the super final second run, so it's all to play for right now. Gunter Oka just behind him making the rabbit ears. Timo Capo. This is all doing his case. best pec flex impression <laughs> of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> the fine physical specimen. <laughs> Absolutely. I think all way borders are. This moment of waiting. Victor Salmon's ankle there, you can see, after he uh, managed to roll it skateboarding. He's been icing that all week. Still managed to lay down two very good runs in the super final, though. Timo Kappel waiting for his score. He's the IWF Rider of the Year in 2016, an award that I believe you also got, Dave. I've won it on the boat, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's definitely, I'm going to say it's one of the most respected awards. No, it's not at all, but I have to say, he deservingly so, you know, he's, he's a phenomenal. And it's an award not just for wakeboarding, but also for your whole kind of outlook on the sport and how you push and progress the sport. So it's not just about competition results, which is, it's always, you know, it's very good to, to, to see that part respected too. Okay, well, the judges taking their sweet time here. Really want to make sure they get this one right for Timo Kapol. Absolutely. On screen as well. I think we have some of the best judges in the game here. You know, chatting to them in the practice, they really know what they're looking for. I know CK, one of the guys, he spent his whole day watching for the last two days. Okay, 67.71 for Timo Kapel. Improves by just over a point, but not by a place. So there will be no podium for Timo Kapel today. Three riders left to drop in the super final. Second runs, all the pressure is on now. But Raf Derone currently in the lead. 77.21 for the Canadian. Yes, he's in the lead, but he still has to give it some more right there. He knows, are we going to see the double flip on the kicker? There it is, that mute double half cap roll. Putting his hand down a bit that time, but not too, not too much, hopefully, that will affect him. And right there, that's probably one of my favorite hits of his. I've said it before, that 360 transfer, landing 50-50 with the rope behind his back, takes some serious skills. This second pass, beautiful 270 up to backside lip slide. Much cleaner than his first run might I add as well. And there it is, rail to rail. And then, oh my, stunning right there. And that's actually, believe it or not, a very similar trick to what he won best trick on Friday. And Raf de Rome, right there. Stand up run until the end. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, he managed a, a coffin slide up the finish ramp there and onto the top. I think that was the best trick I saw out of that. <laughs> very, very creative use of that last feature. Completely. I mean, he's the one, one of the few guys who's really boosting over and you know, look at that double flip. He's just got the grab. Okay, this particular one, his hand goes down slightly. And he's taking off at 90 degrees. Yes, so there's a little, little bit of pre-spin, but when it comes to... And actually, his hand didn't go down looking at the slow-mo. Did control it. Yeah. So William Klang is getting ready behind him. But 85.48 for Raf to run. The creativity, style, and technicality of that run really delivering for the Canadian. And he extends his lead. Now nearly 15 points over second place, Blake Bishop. So William Klang of Sweden about to drop in. Brilliant qualifying runs, but he hasn't landed a run in the super final yet. Absolutely, I say he's feeling the pressure, but it's looking like he's channeling that into absolute perfect execution as he goes for that KGB with the late grab. Now coming into one of his, I'm gonna guess his favorite parts of the course by the way he rides it. 50-50, 270, 90 out. This is the William we've been seeing before, isn't it? He looks poised like a big cat ready to strike. He is, he has a, he is a kind of a cool, calm and collected kind of approach right now as he goes, oh, so nice, that 270 say It's a quintessentially Swedish approach. Absolutely, yeah, he's definitely showing his culture. Oh, no! Uncharacteristic mistake there on the way out. He's, if ever there was a gentleman. 
you know, he's always got the, the best kind of smile on his face. Well, what's interesting about that, we're talking about how easy and clinical he makes those tricks look, but you suddenly see how much is at stake and just how difficult those tricks are when you see him at stake like this. Yeah, like literally, he just got onto the rail a little bit too late, didn't have enough time to kind of find his bearings, which meant the 360 out that I think he was going for it didn't work. It's a shame, but still, it's still a Honestly, an impressive line, despite that last section. Okay, 53.14, only good enough for fifth. I think right now he can enjoy the performance, but later on he'll rue the opportunity missed, especially after he saw those incredible qualifying runs. Now, though, it's the turn of Gunter Oka, the American who was so, so impressive in qualifying. Like William Klang, dropped his first run in the Super Finals, so now the pressure is on. Here he is, Gunther Oka. Believe it or not, had to go to hospital on Friday due to falling on the course. He's not showing any fear of that. Coming off a little bit early there for Gunther. Right now, there it is, that Pete Rose. I absolutely, I have to say, it's one of my favorite tricks he does as he approaches the pipe section. 50-50 on, backside, 360, 50-50 to the landing, so smooth. Oh, well you're taking off the thinnest part of the board and landing on the thinnest part of the board. You've got to be so clinical. Yeah, if you land an inch or two to the left or an inch or two to the right, it could be a whole different story. But Gunther not even letting that be possible. So smooth again right there. As he comes in to the section, he's going rail to rail. Backside 180, again a frontside 180 out right there. That was so nice. And there it is, the 270 transfer, Gunther Oka. Take a bow. It's like he's taken to this course with a scouring brush and some bleach. That was so, so clean. Start to finish. Absolutely. Yeah, that is incredible. I'm literally just excited to see what happens. Some phenomenal wakeboarding right there. Well, Raf Jerome coming up to Gunter Oka there. Interestingly, no hug between those two. Everyone else <laughs> hugged, but Gunter Oka and Raf Jerome, the two men now vying for first and second place, I would imagine, with this run. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting, the stigma between them right there, that no one, you know, let's see what happens. This is always a tense moment for them, waiting for these scores, waiting to hear, you know, where do you arrive? Everyone wants to get on that on that win. Okay, so the score to beat Raptor on set on an 85.48, and this was so technical. Very, very different runs though, aren't they? This one's so technical. Raptor maybe a little more creative, do you think? Absolutely, and Raptor, you know, he's throwing in the double flip, which, Probably isn't as technically difficult, but it's a lot more of kind of hell to leather going at it, which the judges always look to see going big. He's grabbing it nice. So it's definitely, it's definitely going to be interesting to see their perspective of what they prefer. Okay, we're after I'm watching the replays just as closely as Gunter Oka there. Oh, they, they got there. Nah, they did hug. He was the first one out there. We missed that one. Okay, in the shadow of Munich's old TV tower. Down on the lake here in Munich's Olympic Park. After Rome and Gunter Oka wait for the scores. 83.42. It will go to the Canadian Rafter Rome on his first return to a big international contest. The Canadian proves that pedigree. Absolutely, he shows he's got experience and he's got a lot. Look at the stoke right there, Raf over the moon. Going to go back to his brother, Oli Jerome, another professional weight warrior. They're going to be ecstatic about this one. Dave, you talked about this, the fact that he's come out and he saw the course. Tina said it earlier on when she interviewed him. He saw this course and he really liked it. And since Friday, he's looked very comfortable riding it. Absolutely. I think the course suits him, you know, the, the more tech stuff he really likes. He likes to find those creative lines, those transfers. And uh, yeah, and then it's got those big kickers, which he also never shies away from. So uh, yeah, I think it suited him. Well, it definitely suited him. And uh, yeah, it was just a pleasure to watch. Overall, where would you put the level of riding today? Honestly, well, obviously it's world class, but that was some incredible riding. I think there was a few unusual scenarios like Liam Peacock and John Draley maybe not getting through the Super Final, but uh, incredible. Okay, those are the results confirmed. Rafter Rome, Gunter Oka and Blake Bishop in the top three. Disappointment for Salmon Kappel and especially Klang, who came through the qualifying so strongly. We're going to throw down to Tina now, who's lakeside with our winner, Rafter Rome.
Thank you very much, Tina. Really nice to see just how much that means to Rafter Run. Absolutely, such a humble guy, isn't he? He's, he's almost just ecstatic to have got there. He's not, he didn't expect anything. So honestly, I, I'm so happy for Raf and impressed. But an incredible performance there. For me, I think it was William Clangs who will be most disappointed working away so from this. Here. But we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, for we'll winning have this, all taking of the, back the analysis. Back title best streak and then Munich Mesh Park champion. You've seen all those people when you rode back and forth on that course. How does this Munich crowd influence your riding? It was crazy. In the air when I was hitting the kicker, I could hear people like screaming and I was like, ah! I was just freaking out. It was awesome. Thank you everyone for coming. You guys are a great crowd. It was super fun. Thanks again. Thank you, Raf Karom. Good job. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Munich Mash here in the Olympia Park in Munich for the post show of Wakeboard Park Finals. I'm here with David O'Keefe. Good to be here. Dave, you good? Yes, I have just experienced an absolutely phenomenal setup with the wakeboarding. It was unbelievable to watch how the riders took to the course, how the pressure, you know, how everything, how they took into consideration what the judges were looking for. It was an exciting final. A couple of mistakes there from some of the big names. We saw Gunter Oka come through and he nearly came good after a fall in the first run. He nearly came good in the second run. I know, he, it was at his fingertips. You know, there's a lot of a lot of moving parts. The course itself happened so fast. So when you land one trick, you're straight into the next one. So maybe that got to Gunter, but yeah. A lot, a lot of kind of a few upsets, let's say, and then obviously a lot of fantastic moments too. Well, William Klang especially, uh, he came last in the final in the end, but he'd shown such promise, and as you said, he'd broken down. He was one of the guys who studied all of the judging criteria and said, right, how am I going to build my run to milk the most points out of this course? Absolutely, he was so analytical about it, and he was so calculated. And in the practice, all he did was his competition run. So that run that we saw him do in the earlier rounds, he'd done it 20, 30 times. So it's very unusual to see it happen where he didn't get to put it together in the finals. But, you know, I mean, he's young. He's got time. Okay. Well, we can take a look at our top three now. And we're going to start with third place, Blake Bishop from the US. He really pulled this together on the second run. He is. Blake's kind of on a bit of a come up at the moment, making a name for himself. And he deserved that podium. As you can see there, that Pete Rose right now coming in. He's so good to see the way he's just kind of playing his board, feeling confident. And this is it here right there. That 50 50, 270 transfer, 98. So solid. Well, this is what having a private park does for you. Absolutely. I mean, Blake's building his own office, he's giving it a bit of a ghetto vibe. So these probably feel quite nice. And it was that rewind right there. And then as he comes in, this, this is kind of the main part. And so solid on there. And again, rewinding the opposite way, front side right there. And then so, so nice. Going to blind. He kind of knows it at that point. He's, he's done a good run. Okay, we can go next to Gunter Oka in second place. And in this run, we thought this was going to push uh, 
great uh, Durant all the way. Yeah, I mean, I was certain watching this, Gunther, he knew what he had to do. And he, like, I think, in fact, if you look at it, this first hit right there, it's so nice, but he didn't quite get to where he wanted to get on that rail. And that may have cost him the win, to be quite honest. But that tail grab Pete Rose, as we've said many times, it's one of the most absolutely pleasing tricks on the eyes. That's the hardest working trick for him here, that 50-50, 360 to 50-50. Yeah, and if we saw Raf Jerome doing a very similar hit, and that's you can see the top guys, a lot of the stuff becomes very similar. Both have a different approach, whereas he's coming in right there, and then nice and easy as he comes in. This main section, this is where it all happens. That's where they're putting all their emphasis on. You can see that 50-50. And then going blind and then outside 180 in, or off, sorry, apologies. And there, that 270 transfer, so solid and so, and that's his thing, it's clean, isn't it? Absolutely immaculate, they call him the janitor. <laughs> uh, and then in first place, how could we, how could we forget? Raf Durant, uh, the Canadian, was majestic in the finals. He only just scraped in though, didn't he? He did only just scrape in, it took him a while to find his rhythm. As you can see right there, the 270 transfer is so nice. It's that double flip right there. He did get a little bit squirrely, but it wasn't as sketchy as I first thought. And then this is it. Watch how he does the 360 transfer. Landing blind. Now that is so technical and takes so much ability of getting... It's inches. It's inch by inch that. And he's really making it look so easy. And I think that's kind of a huge part of why he won. Along with that kind of scary approach of finding that crazy boost line right there. I love this last feature. This last feature, the way he hits it, it's absolutely sublime right there. Coming in, that little kind of method grab, it's really stylish. It's a little bit of a rewind, isn't it? It's like the method stops it and then he pulls it back. Absolutely, and, and that's, he's probably one of the only riders really doing that in this kind of level of competition, which kind of has his own flair to it there. Okay, here is the podium. Look to Oka on the left, Blake Bishop third place on the right there, but in the middle, the man who's made his way back to competition after a three-year hiatus. He dominated wakeboarding 2012-2013, but now Raf Daron comes back. He's picked his contest very carefully. He loved the course here at the uh, Munich Mash for the wakeboard finals. Decided to come back in, and he has delivered, taking out best trick and the wakeboard park finals. Uh, it's been a packed weekend though. We've had both skateboarding and BMX lead up to this. Jake Ilardi, the rookie from Florida, in his first big trip to Europe, takes the podium in Red Bull roller coaster. And then Irak Rizayev, the Russian, came out and managed to beat Britain's Jack Clark and Venezuela's Daniel Durs to take out the BMX Park final. All that's left for me to say is thank you to Dave. Thank you so much, Ed. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed every minute. Everyone who was with us yesterday, Corey Bowen, Tina Dixon, Nora Vasconcelos, and of course Chris Pastras. Thank you for watching, it's been an absolute blast here at Munich National.